just love you and we bless you. You are worthy of every ounce of praise that we could possibly give. We love you, God. So today, join us as we bless the Lord. You are so worthy, God. We thank you. We love you. We bless you. We give our all to you, Father, because you are worthy. Hallelujah. We give you all of our praise. We give you the highest praise. In Jesus' name, we bless you. Hallelujah. Woo!
the awesomeness of you and how your love will never fail me words cannot express what i feel inside i can't describe your glory divine but as a token of my love this is what i'll do i lift my hands and cry lord you're holy
Father, thank you that you are holy and we get to worship your holy name and there is none like you. We worship you right now with our tithes and offering at this time. The Lord calls us to be cheerful givers and giving is a form of worship. Your gifts help us maintain our day-to-day -day church operations and because we are a missions-focused church, your giving also helps us minister to others locally and support our missionaries abroad. You can give safely and securely on our website at lwicc.org, our Living Word Church app, or text LWGIVE and the dollar amount to 74483. Of course, you can also mail your checks to the church payable to LWICC. Let's lift these gifts before the Lord right now. Lord God, thank you that you give all the resources and everything that, so that we can serve you and love you with our giving and bless others around us. Thank you that you give us the enabling um, and also thank you that you remind us that everything is yours and not ours so we can cheerfully give. Lord, I pray that you will bless this day and help us to give our time and attention to you as well in a form of worship. And you will bless this time and I pray that you will touch that one watching this service right now and you will speak to them uh, in person and your Holy Spirit will minister to them through every word spoken by Ms. Minister Shirley. In Jesus' name, Amen. And now let's prepare our hearts for an inspired message from our own Minister Shirley. Good morning, Living Word Online family. It is so good to be with you on this Lord's Day. I'm delighted to share the God, God's Word with you today and extol the Lord together with you. Let's pray. Father God, we open your word with faith and hope and expectation to hear from you. Holy God, we arrest our thinking, our body, our senses to you that we may hear you clearly. We thank you, Father God, for your Holy Spirit and your word given to us. Father, after sitting under the teaching of your word, we will never get up the same and live the same way. Help us, God. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity to share this word you have put on my heart with your children. Father, none of me but all of you go forth, O oh Father. Take over, O oh God, and have your way in the, everyone who hear this word. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's open our Bible to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Let's read together. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. 
Amen. The title of my sermon is Christian's Armor. Christian's Armor. Most of you are very familiar with this passage. Today, I would like to dig deeper with you on this passage and get some practical insights in our everyday living. We know Paul wrote this epistle to the Ephesians during his two-year imprisonment in Rome. In this epistle, Paul gives believers instructions on how to live a life of love by addressing the husband, wife, parent, children, and slave master relationships. In chapters one through three, Paul writes that we as believers are seated with Christ. In Ephesians two verse six, it says, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In chapters four and five, we find ourselves walking, walking, practically walking out the marvelous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in our everyday life, in the church, in our families, in our marriages. In chapter six, we are standing. The word stand is used four times in this passage. Standing against the devil's schemes, standing our ground, standing firm. The will of God is that we sit, walk, and stand. Many times Paul used the military imagery in describing spiritual things. One reason for this was that in many parts of the Roman Empire, the military was out in full force. Paul used illustrations and terms that the people of his day were familiar with. Paul used the imagery of the different parts of a Roman soldier's armor to illustrate some very important ways that a Christian can be equipped for service to Lord Jesus. He reminds us that we need to be constantly ready for battles, always. Soldiers understand their need to be ready for battle always. Similarly, as children of God trying to live in this world as citizens of heaven, we are constantly under attack from evil forces. They don't go away just because we close our eyes to it. Facing the evil forces of our world can be a frightening experience alone. But we are not alone. God is with us. And he gives us the means not only to defend ourselves, but also to take the battle to the enemy. Furthermore, we can win. If God is for us, who can be against us? Thanks be to God for the victory which he gives us through our Lord Jesus Christ. How do we do it? We as children of God, we understand the world through God's word and his spirit. Paul recognized this constant battle in his ministry and he sees a picture ready made. Most likely he was chained by his wrist to a Roman soldier who made sure that Paul wouldn't escape. Paul was literally a diplomat in chain. Paul was a man who could get alongside anyone and sure enough, he would have spoken to these soldiers who were so compelled to be near him many times. And as he watched them and listened to them carefully, the soldier's armor suggests a picture to him. He recognizes that the Christian too has his armor. And part by part, Paul takes the armor of the Roman soldier and translates it into Christian terms. I have a picture of a Roman soldier wearing his full armor ready for battle for our purpose of study today. Please take a look. Most of the armor is defensive in nature and some are offensive. 
the Roman government provided their armies with everything they needed to do for battle. They were equipped for service to Caesar. How much more should the children of God be equipped to do battle for our Lord? Paul begins this portion of scripture, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Paul reminds us that our battle is not against an enemy we can see on the battlefield, but on a spiritual level, that is Satan himself. One important aspect we must understand up front is that we cannot win this battle in our own strength. We will need the help of the Holy Spirit to win it. Remember, God reminds us, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Now, there are seven pieces of the armor. Five pieces are defensive and two pieces are offensive. Verses 14 through 17a speak of the defensive weapons by which we can protect ourselves in this battle. Verses 17b and 18, we are introduced to the offensive weapon, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and prayer. To be successful in our battles, we must know who our enemies are and who they aren't. We don't want to be fighting the wrong opponents. Apostle Paul informs us, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. People are not our enemies. Even if they are attacking us, persecuting us, hurting us, even killing us. Our battle is not with them, but with the evil spirits who are behind them, influencing them, controlling them. We are not at war with human beings. We want them to be saved. We, want, we don't want to hurt them. We want them to turn to God. We want them to be redeemed. We want them to be set free from the kingdom of darkness and become our brothers and sisters in Christ and join us in our war against the dark powers. We understand human beings are made in the image of God and they are very precious. We also need to understand that our enemies are very organized and powerful. The devil is their leader. He is the God of this world. Serving under him are rulers and powers and authorities and forces, evil spirits who control the various parts of this dark world. Our enemies are intelligent and devious. The devil has schemes to harm us. Some, some, sometimes they, the, their schemes involve intelligence, careful planning, and craftiness. Satan and his demons know us. They know our strengths and they know our weaknesses, and they want to exploit our weaknesses. How do they attack us? Good question. They try to keep us from the truth that will set us free. They will entice us to false teachings. They cultivate false religions and philosophies and try to keep people trapped in those false belief systems. If the truth sets us free, and it does, then lies and deceptions keep us enslaved. The evil spirits know our strengths and our weaknesses and target our weaknesses. If we struggle with pride, greed, lust, laziness, anger, selfishness, the desire to control and dominate others, if, and if we are tempted by drugs and alcohol, the evil spirits know. When we yield to the things that tempt us, our weaknesses get worse and worse, 
and our willpower and our self-control are diminished. The evil spirits want us to get weaker and weaker, more and more corrupt, less and less human, more and more wicked, just like they are. Many times we lose sight of the truth and we lash out against flesh and blood, against our brother in the church, against our family members, against spouses, Apostle Paul reminds us that we need to look beyond them to see the spiritual forces of evil that are motivating them, influencing them, and controlling them. We will know them by their fruits. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. We can stand against we can stand our ground by putting on the full armor of God. If we only put on some of the armor, the enemy will know where we are vulnerable and target our vulnerability. We need the full armor so that our vulnerable spots can be protected. So let's consider the armor of God piece by piece. Beginning in verse 3, 14 through verse 18. We will look carefully at each piece of the Christian's armor to stand against the spiritual forces of darkness. The first piece is the belt of truth. The belt of a Roman soldier kept his clothes in place and his sword giving him quick access to his weapon. Truth is like a belt. It supports us and protects us. It keeps things in place for us. What is truth? Jesus said, thy word is truth. In Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 17. Other people may guess and grope, but Christians live confidently because we know the truth. So when we are tempted, we remind ourselves what the Word of God says and are strengthened to resist that temptation. We do what Jesus did when he was tempted by the devil in the wilderness. We know from the Gospels that Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights right after his baptism and right before his public ministry began and he was led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So the devil came to him when he was hungry and weak. The devil's intention was to destroy Jesus. But we, the, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But we know that Jesus overcame the devil by saying three times, it is written. We too can use the same strategy. The second piece of a Roman soldier's armor is the breastplate, which covers the chest of a soldier, protecting his vital organs like his heart and his lungs from the enemy's attack. As children of God, righteousness is our excellent defense. When we are clothed in righteousness, we are unbeatable. Righteousness means we are in a right relationship with God. By nature, we are enemies of God. Jesus makes us right through the cross. Only through Jesus we are reconciled to God and others. Jesus, the breastplate of righteousness, protect our hearts, our affections, our love with both his imputed and his imparted righteousness. The third piece of the armor is the footwear. The soldier with his boots off is at a serious disadvantage when the action begins. He cannot perform his mission well. Likewise, we need to have our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. We should always be ready for the spiritual 
battles warring against us, our mission as Christians is to proclaim the gospel. We need to be ready on the spur of the moment to do that. To do it effectively and swiftly, we must know the gospel. We can easily share with others, pray with others, able to witness knowing the circumstances, being genuine in our love for Christ. The gospel, the good news, brings us peace with God and also will bring peace to those who believe the gospel. Just like having a good pair of shoes gives us the confidence to walk across a rough terrain, having confidence in Christ boldly allows us to proclaim his name. While we may face many troubles in this life, we can be at peace knowing that the Savior of the world loves us and cares for us. Ultimately, the shoes of peace equip us to fight for Christ in the spiritual battles we face. The fourth piece of the armor is the shield of faith. Clearly, a shield is vitally important to a soldier. It provides a blanket of protection. It, it is meant to be taken up at all circumstances. It is the first barrier against the enemy's attack. The shield protected the soldier from swords, spears, and arrows, including arrows set on fire. We need the shield of faith with which we will be able to extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Our enemies will attack us with fiery trials and temptations. When that happens, we need to be ready to respond with faith. Faith is our shield. Faith protects us. What, what is faith? Faith is knowing something without being able to see that something. Faith is knowing that God is real and his word is true. All believers have this promise. In 1 John 5, verses 4 and 5 says this, Everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. When we believe God and take him at his word, we remain grounded in the truth and the lies of the enemy lose its power and we become overcomers. In that way, faith is our shield. By faith we stand and by faith we conquer. The fifth piece of the armor is helmet of salvation. A soldier had a helmet protecting his head. We are to have the helmet of salvation. So many people are confused, unhappy, and angry. They try to be happy by turning to drugs, alcohol, sex and relationships, and by seeking money and power and worldly success. I would be confused angry and upset too if I didn't know who I am, whose I am, what is my value, what is my worth, having no self-worth. Much of the battle we are in is, is fought in our minds. We protect our minds by knowing that we are children of God, highly favored and chosen, called out of this world into his marvelous kingdom and he has prepared good works for us to do before the creation of the world. We must learn to keep our helmets buckled so that the fiery missiles of the enemy does not lodge in our thoughts and set us on fire. As we wear the helmet of salvation every day, our minds become more insulated against the suggestions desires and traps the enemy lays for us. We choose to ground, guard our minds 
from excessive worldly influence and instead we think on things that honor Christ. In doing so, we wear our salvation as a protective helmet that will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We just talked about the five pieces of the armor that are defensive, enabling us to protect ourselves from every attack of the enemy. The sixth and the seventh pieces of the armor are offensive, enabling us not only to protect ourselves, but take the battle to the enemy, which is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and prayer. So the sixth piece of the armor is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The Bible is our sword. The weapon that allows us to go on the offensive against the enemy. When we are being lied to or when we are being tempted, we remind ourselves what the word of God teaches. We apply the word of God to every situation we encounter and every decision we make. When we understand the word of God, we are able to go on the offensive and teach its truth to others. We are able to demolish the strongholds of erroneous thinking, destroy wrong arguments, tear down false and arrogant opinions, and turn thoughts that were disobedient to Christ to thoughts that are obedient to him. If we are to be able to use it in the heat of the battle, we must be trained with the Bible now. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says this, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Finally, Paul comes to the seventh piece of the armor, the greatest weapon of all, and that is prayer. Our primary assault weapon is prayer. Pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. We note three things Paul writes about prayer. Number one, prayer must be constant. Our tendency is often to pray only in times of crisis. But it is from daily prayer that the Christian will find daily strength. Prayer must be intense. Heartless, mindless, ritualistic prayers get us nowhere. Prayer demands the concentration of our every faculty on God. Prayer must be unselfish. Too often our prayers are so much for ourselves and so little for others. We must learn to pray for others as much as we pray for ourselves with fervency. James chapter 5 verse 16 says this, Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much. Through prayer we draw near to God and God draw near to us. God wants us to be close to him at all times. We develop such an intimacy and dependency on God through prayer. It is our greatest weapon against all the schemes the enemy has planned against us. Real spiritual warfare is about resisting temptation and deception by knowing God and his word and taking the word of God to others. A Christian without prayer is powerless. 
These are the offensive weapons that enable us to batter down the walls of Satan's attack. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, coupled with a continuous prayer life against which the enemy has no defense. Romans 13, 12 says, put on the armor of light. And Ephesians 6, 11 says, put on the full armor of God. Our armor is nothing other than Jesus himself. Day by day, every moment of every day, we are to clothe ourselves with Christ by immersing our minds in the awareness of the truth of who we are in Christ and the power that dwells within us by which we walk by faith. A story is told about a man in the army of Alexander the Great who was brought before the emperor, accused of showing cowardice in battle. Alexander asked the man what his name was. He replied softly, Alexander, I, can, I cannot hear you, the ruler stated. The man repeated again a little louder, Alexander. The process was repeated one more time after which Alexander the Great reprimanded the man saying, either you change your name or change your conduct. To how many of us Christians Jesus is saying, either change your conduct or change your name. God help us to quit being a wimp and commit ourselves to becoming a warrior for the sake of a lost world, for the sake of his kingdom, for the sake of our family, for, our, for the sake of our marriage, and for our own sake, respond to the call, put on the full armor of God. Now we all understand we cannot put on the full armor of God unless we know God. We know God through Jesus Christ. It is through the Bible we come to know God, Jesus, and His Holy Spirit and develop a relationship with God. For those of you who have not come into a spirit of sonship yet, we cannot call God Abba Father or receive any of His blessings yet. I invite you today to start that process. The gospel is very simple. Jesus has taken all the blame, all the shame, and the death for us. When we study the four gospels, we see how much Jesus loved us and sacrificed his life for us. He has given us victory in himself. It's a matter of believing what Christ has done on the cross for us and receiving that into your own heart. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 13 says, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. John chapter 1, verse 12 says, yet to all who received him, to all who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. If it is your desire to receive Christ into your life, and I can tell you that would be a decision you will never regret in your life. Not only that you won't regret, you will be so blessed and happy you made that decision. I ask you to repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you, being God yourself, came to this world for my sins. I believe you bore my sins and died on the cross for me. I receive you, Jesus, into my life. I repent of my sins. I know I am a sinner and I cannot save myself. Come into my life and have your way. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Now, if you prayed that prayer and you meant it, welcome to the family of God. We would ask you to start attending a Bible-based Christ-centered church where you can grow in the word of Christ, fellowship with other believers and begin to worship God in spirit and in truth. Now, we would love for you to come to Living Word and be part of our family. And we have a place for you and you can grow with us. We are excited for you. God bless you. Shall we pray? Holy God, we thank you for reminding us how powerful your word is. Thank you, Father, for loving us so much that you sacrificed your son for us. You made it so easy for us. God, this morning, we thank you for reminding us who we are, whose we are, and the power that dwells within us. Father God, live us, help us to walk in victory, live in victory. Father God, that we will not give this enemy any foothold in our lives, oh Father. God gives us ears to hear, eyes to see, heart to understand, and mind to be renewed, that we live in your mighty blessing and power, always defeating the enemy who is relentless, Father. He never sleeps, oh God. Father, but in Jesus, we have the victory. Thank you for reminding us that, Father God. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We so thank you for loving us. We feel loved by you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. This we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Love you, Living Word family, very much. Be blessed and have a blessed week ahead. Thank you, Minister Shirley, for reminding us to put on the whole armor of God. Hey, online family, happy springtime. Wow, do we have a special Holy Week coming up just for you. We'll start with a fun family event on Palm Sunday on March 28th from 5 to 8 p.m. Come worship the Lord and watch two movies from the comfort of your car. Register on our website and social media. And we encourage you to support our food bank by bringing canned goods. Our pastoral council invites you to corporate prayer and praise the next two Saturdays, March 27th and April 3rd. We'll pray and share testimonies of what God has done for us from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Check our website and social media for Zoom details. On Good Friday, April 2nd, come together for a time of contemplation at the foot of the cross online at noon or 3 p.m. Celebrate the wonder of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ at our in-person service on April 4th at 10 a.m. Register through our website and social media. Seating is limited. You can also join us online on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. Our food bank drop-off is today. Bring your non-perishable food items to the church from 3 to 4 p.m. Take this opportunity to share your love with neighbors in need. Donations must be in original packaging and do not forget to check the freshness dates. Hey church family! Now you can nominate a candidate for our Board of Trustees. Check the website for nomination criteria and submission details. The deadline is April 11th. Let's give this important decision our prayerful consideration. We can be doers of the Word by sharing what we have with God's children here and abroad. Many are so grateful for your generous help through your benevolence donations. Also, let's remember the neediest children of the world by giving to our children's fund this week. Here at Living Word, we love you and we care about you and we want to know your needs and prayer requests. Call 301-989-HOPE, extension 1600, or email care at lwicc.org. Also, stay in touch with us through our social media, Living Word app, YouTube, 
and website. And remember, this is living. Thank you for joining us for this week's message. We hope that you heard something that will make a difference in your life. If you're part of the Living Word family and wish to give in support of this ministry, visit us online at lwicc.org and click on the tab that says Give. You may also give through our Living Word Church app, or you can text LWGIVE and the dollar amount to 74483. Next week's White Basket Offering goes to Missions. For more information about Living Word International, service times, directions, and how to sow into the ministry, visit us online at lwicc.org. Again, that's lwicc.org. Thank you again for visiting us and have a blessed week.